So till that point, actually, we discuss in your rested session. Now we will go ahead and we will see in the system. First, we will see the configuration, what kind of configuration that we need to do it. At the same time, when we are doing the configuration, we also see how that qualified spike, qualified demand spike will be calculated. Okay, how that spike threshold and spike horizon will be calculated. That we will see it now. Okay, now what I will do, I will go to the system and we'll see what kind of configuration that we need to do. So basically, it's a very small configuration that we need to do in the DDMRP. And that is nothing but first we need to activate the DDMRP. Then we need to maintain the DDMRP profile. Then we need to assign this DDMRP profile to your plant. Okay. So in the profile details, nothing. I guess we no need to maintain anything more. Okay. Okay. So in SAP, actually, when we are doing this kind of configuration, we can do this configuration directly at a table level by SM30. Or SAP has launched an application. From there also, we can do this configuration. For activation and this thing, definitely we need to go at a table level. So we need to have a table level authorization for that. So what I will do, I will first go to the system. I will show you this configuration in the table level. Okay, This is already activated, so I will just show you. And then also when we will go to the Fury application, that time I will show you how it looks like. Okay, So I'm just logging to the system. And first thing, I will go to SC16N. And as I said here, the table starting with PPH. So there are different table PPH underscore BF underscore PRFL underscore V. So these are the different tables. In the different tables, our DDMRP configuration is there. So I, what I'll do, I will just search this configuration with this table. Okay, I'm just going back. Yes, C16N. Okay, enter. And here, or, or what I will do, SM30 directly. I'll go to SM30. SM30. And here I will put down PPH star. Okay. Now see, these are the tables. That's what I have just shown you there in the screenshot. So profile header data, profile assignment, profile details, and activate demand driven replenishment and lead time calculation method. So first I'll go to the activate demand driven replenishment. If you go here, you can go to the maintain. And here you can see activate demand driven, right? So for the system is already activated. So this tick should be there, right? This is the first thing. Second thing is PPH star. Second thing is profile data. Okay. So I'll just go to this table and I can see it here. So there is one default profile already created. Okay, this is just alphanumeric. So it's, as per standard, it's created a one default profile. So we will use the same one. Here you can create new entry and create new profile and do the configuration for that. And you can assign that profile to your plan. That is also possible, right? So this is the default profile. Then I will go to PPH star one more table where you can see profile details, okay? So I'm just going to the profile details. And here is the default profile. That's what we just saw over there. So what is there inside? See here, yesterday we just discussed, we need to put some of the static parameter that is lead time factor and variability factor. And that is maintained over here in this profile. Here we is saying, okay, buy, buy part, Okay, if variability is low and decoupling lead time is short, my variability factor should be 0 0.30 and decoupling lead time factor should be 0 0.80. So this is what standard uh, parameters maintain over there. We will use the same one because we want to see how it actually calculates. But in real practice, with the help of multiple iterations, we will come to know what should be that factor that we need to maintain it there. Once we start looking into the calculation, okay? At the same time, if my variability indicator is medium and this uh, decoupling lead uh, indicator is short, what should be the my factor? So that, that's what we need to maintain. So what as of now, what I will do, I will just use the same parameters, whatever standard SAP has given, right? And the main important thing that we will see it here is, Assign this 
profile to your plant. So it's called prof profile assignment. I'm going here and let's see here. So see this default profile I just assigned to my plant TJ03. The same fashion you can assign it to your plant also. Okay. Now here there are some additional things that we need to put it. And what is that? We will see it here. Okay. So this will help us to calculate the spike. That's what we are discussing. So what I will do now, I will do one thing. Just a minute. I will copy this part to explain you how it will help us to do the calculation. Okay. I will go here and I'll put this thing over here. Okay. So yesterday we discussed during the calculation if my demand is going to specific high above the spike threshold, system should consider this demand in the calculation and it should propose me the right proposal quantity. That is we call it as qualified spike. So to do uh, to get this qualified spike in the system and the calculation, this is the configuration that we are supposed to do it here. So what I will do here, I'll put one column here, okay. And here in this uh, calculation, we know just a minute, I will use one marker also, okay. So here I'm saying, okay, my demand is going like this. If it is going like this, if it is going like this, if it is going like, this, these are the incoming spikes which are going above my spike threshold that has to get calculated in the calculation. At the same time, we need to define spike horizon. Okay, so these two factors that we need to calculate so that it will help us to get the right demand spike. So basically, first thing is spike horizon. Yes, I'll put it here, spike horizon, okay? Spike horizon, how system will calculate the spike horizon? The formula for that is, it will check your spike horizon decoupling lead time multiplier into decouple lead time lead time okay plus spike horizon constant spike horizon constant okay so if you see here my spike horizon constant has been maintained over here. And I'm sorry, I, it's actually, I need to make it big so that we can, this is nothing but your spike horizon constant. And my spike multiplier, horizon multiplier is this one. That's what we maintain over here. Now, if you see here, we know the decoupling lead time, right? Let's say yesterday we saw like I am having a decoupling lead time of let's say 10 into now here I'm maintaining my spike horizon multiplier as one plus my spike horizon constant I just maintain as a five. It will say 15 days. So here in the calculation system will check 15 days ahead and in the 15 days if there is any spike coming up it will get calculated in your calculation. If I'm putting here 10 then it will be uh, one into 10 plus 10, it will be 20, correct? So that's how system check the spike horizon. Now to calculate the spike threshold, how spike threshold will get calculated? To get the spike threshold, I'll put spike threshold here, spike. Right, threshold is equal to is nothing but percentage of safety stock. 
is as simple as that, okay? So here is the spike threshold I have mentioned, correct? And I mentioned for my plant TJ03 as a 0.5. So it will check the material, okay? And material safety stock that what we have maintained. Let's say now my material safety stock is 100 into 0 0.50, correct? That's how it will calculate your spike threshold. And if it is going above that spike threshold, it will get calculated. So let's say this demand is not going above, this demand is not going, but this demand is going above the spike threshold. So it will get calculated in your calculation and you will try to get here in this formula, qualified spike. That's how actually system calculate the qualified spike. So basically, as we saw here, we need to do this kind of configuration first, activate DDMRP, then maintain profile, then profile details and assign this profile to your plant. While assigning the profile to your plant, you need to tell what is the spike horizon constant, what is the spike horizon DLT multiplier, what is the spike horizon threshold, and so that it will help us to do the whole end-to-end -end calculation for that. So this is the only configuration, okay, that we need to do it here in the DDMRP. Guys, I'll take a quick pause here. If you have any question on the configuration point, okay, and then we will go to the system. I mean, through the Fury application, I'll show the configuration point over there also, and then we will run the scenario. 